All right, everyone, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over a uh, UFC card for Saturday, May 7th. Uh, tremendous card from a you know, quality perspective, and from a volume perspective, we do have 15 fights, which, if this, this holds, is a really full card. Um, you get a little bit of everything. You got a couple of five-round fights. You have some, some good favorites. You have some decent underdogs. You have a huge prize for first place. And, you know, this uh, combining with the Kentucky Derby, uh, you have a real, real solid D-Gen Saturday, as I like to say, along with all the other stuff that's going on. Um, really, really strong card from the DraftKings perspective. Offers a lot uh, in the way of analysis and in the way of, of choices. Uh, it, it's definitely a card that, it, it really, it really tests your ability to prioritize, you know, look, you could play 150 lineups and get your share of everything, but you could also play 20 lineups. And if you play 20 lineups, you're really going to have to make some, you know, some pretty big, uh, big statements, so to speak with, uh, with your, uh, with your core. Um, you could make cases for a lot of these fights. So, you know, like anything else, some of them are just going to have to fall by the wayside. Um, and let, let's, let's just get right to it. I'm going to start with the, with the two, uh, five round fights, which are really, really difficult to fade. You know, you have Esparza, Namayunis, that's the co-main event of the women. And then you have the main event of Oliveira against uh, Gaethje. Um, you, <laughs> both fights are really, really high level. So you're going to get a lot of action and a lot of fantasy points. And with five rounds to work with, uh, those fights are, are really, really solid. The only thing that, that you can say that can justify fading them is, is simply the math of having 13 other fights. You know, even if the winner of both those fights scores 100 points, which they probably will, um, that'll get them, you know, full 12 X to make the lot, the optimal, you still have to outperform, you know, you still have to be one of really the top six scores. Um, and it's possible that just because you have 13 fights to fade aside from those two, that you might get, you know, six really, really strong scores out of the others, which we have seen over the last couple of weeks. Now this past week, Unfortunately, you had the main event also score huge to the point where you had um, <laughs> you had the loser in the winning lineup too. But the but but the thing is, there were so many fights that scored 120, 125, or even like the week before was even a better example of that. That you had someone score, who, I forget who it was, someone scored like 100 points at 7,400 in the first fight of the night. Everybody was so sure that she would be optimal. And she was nowhere near the optimal lineup by the end of it because it's so many other huge scores. So that's the one argument you can make against these main events. Um, these two five round fights is that there's just so many other fights that it's possible that you get six, uh, six winners that eclipse these, these two scores, but it's going to be tough to do. Certainly the two underdogs in these fights are extremely strong. I, I, I would venture to say that Carla Esparza, for example, is probably going to be the most popular fighter on the whole slate, which is usually it's pretty rare. And honestly, for an underdog to be the highest uh, owned fighter on the slate, but because of the pricing, I mean, she's 7,300 in a five round fight where her path to victory or her attack is going to be wrestling and takedowns, you know? So it's, it's basically, it's almost the Holy grail of, of DFS, you know, or was it the, not the Holy grail, the, uh, the three wise men, I, I forget what it was, a three something or other um, three keys. You, know, you got pricing, you got, you know, you got, uh, you got wind condition. I mean, it's, it's all there for you here with the Sparza. And I think that as a result, she's going to be really highly owned and it's and pretty, and for good reason. Um, and it's, it's weird because it's hard to say 
it's tough to fade Asparza because she is a two to one underdog, right? So she's looking at best fight odds. She rates to lose the fight about 30, you know, 66% of the time. But, but the thing is, is when she does win that one third of the time, it's going to score so big that you're just going to have to have it. So I, I think she's probably I mean, justifiably the strongest underdog on the slate by, by, by an enormous amount. Um, actually, I wouldn't say enormous amount because we get to the second one, also coming from one of the five round fights in the main, that being Justin Gaethje. I, listen, I posted these um, projections that I have up here and for the life of me, I don't quite understand them. Um, they have Gaethje with a median projection of 58 fantasy points. And I think that's, that's, that's ludicrous and insane. I mean, between the two guys, Oliveira and Gaethje, there's going to be so much action going on. I mean, I feel as, I really feel as though Gaethje can get 60 in a loss, um, for example. Um, I mean, look, if he gets finished, that's obviously something different, but, but there's going to be so much volume thrown by him in this fight that, I don't know, him at 7,700, I think that's insane. <laughs> um, he's, he's another one. He's like a, he's not even a two to one underdog. He's, he's like a, he's a six to maybe an eight to five underdog. And at 7,700 with all that volume, boy, oh boy. Um, that's another one. It's really, really tough to fade. And, you know, when you compare these two underdogs to some of these others, that we're going to get to, I mean, this is just tough. You know, these, these two dogs are really, really strong. Now, first of all, to answer your question that you probably have going right now, is this a card where you could stack either or both of these fights? Uh, the quick answer is in cash. I think you should, you should do that. Um, I don't really play cash, but if I did, this is exactly what I would do. I would stack both these fights. Um, I think that both, both losing fighters could be could put up good fantasy points, which is which is always a good little safety net there. But in tournaments, I think the problem with doing it this week, um, even though it won last week, is there's just too many other fights. You know, it's last week was a reduced card, so there weren't as many opportunities to get those high scores. Here, um, I just think there's too many other opportunities. I think that stacking the main on a card like this, so much, so much going on, uh, is probably not going to work out. Um, but you know, in cash, you can certainly do this. So like right off the bat, these two five round fights are just, are just extremely strong. I mean, a lot of volume, a lot of fantasy points and a lot of time to, to, to get, to get them. Um, okay. How do I want to do this? Um, let, let's, let's, let's look at another fight. I'm kind of be jumping all over the place, but I kind of don't care. The, the the theme for me this week is fortunate or unfortunately are going to be women fights. Um, so that Rose fight is one of them. This other fight that I just feel as though is going to be a real key fight is this Godinez Carnelosi. And when you look at the inside the distance prop, it, you're thinking, huh? I mean, like it's it's favored to go to a decision. What's what's what what gives here? Um, and this is, you know, fortunately or unfortunately going to be a product of the fact that I've now getting some experience seeing all these fighters. And I've seen this Carnelosi several times now, and she is an animal. I mean, she is, she, she just gets after it. She's totally jacked. She is just comes nonstop. Um, I've heard People say that she might have cardio issues. I don't know about that. I mean, she seems, I don't know, but I, I think she's awesome. And then Gudinez, who we've seen fight, like th it seems like every week, but like three times at least in the past couple of months. I mean, she's she's a DraftKings, you know, gold mine. I mean, she wants to get takedowns. And, and when you want to get takedowns, that's exactly what you want to DraftKings scoring. So you know, between Carnelosi's volume and Dinez's takedowns, I think that 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 this is just a very active fight that's going to just rack up the fantasy points. I have no idea which way it's going to go. Um, look, you have you have Dinez is about a two to one favorite, so I guess she wins you know sixty five percent of the time, something like that. 
But I'll tell you this, if Carlosi wins, she is going to score a ton. And I think that if Godinez wins, I think she's going to score a ton. And I think this is going to be a really good key fight. And this is, I'm looking at Godinez here and she's looking at 12% ownership. And even um, Carnelosi, well, 25%. I mean, that's, that's a little chalkier, but still. Um, I think that, I think you're going to want to get somebody from here. Uh, another one, which I kind of have an opinion on is this, is this Gatto Cortez fight. So this is, I, I just, this is, this is what I've become now is, is someone who just watches the industry and just kind of fades it. Um, you know, I'm looking at the, at the win odds here and it says Cortez minus 145 and not to mention that Cortez's path to victory is going to be takedowns, which is what we want to see. I, I, I challenge you to scour the earth for content re related to this MMA card. And you will see that I would say almost every professional tout out there is picking Gatto in this matchup. Almost everyone. Um, and when that's the case, and you kind of wonder, I mean, so what's Cortez like a bum? Who's 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 a, a buck forty favorite where it really matters, right? I mean, you could you could have touts going this this this. I like Gatto. I like Gatto. I don't know. But in the end, you have Cortez at, at she's going to win at 60% of the time. And she has the grappling upside. So for me, uh, I, 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 would, I would play Car Cortez in this spot. Um, she also pretty favorably plus, what is she, 8,600? Let me just double check. 8,700. Uh, again, I don't think anybody's going to play her. I'm going to say anybody, I, don't know. I just, I think that she's going to be, I don't know, 10%, maybe, maybe a little more, but it's a tough range to get to when you can just pay up a little more for these nine K guys or go down to, to those really, you know, those better underdogs that, that I mentioned. So, I mean, this Cortez at that price is, looks really, really good. Um, and who knows, maybe Gatto ends up being somewhat chalky in the end. Um, I don't think that's necessarily the case, but um, I, I think this fight is going to deliver. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't mind playing a little Gatto because her, her path to victory is probably submission, um, maybe off of her back if Cortez has her taken down. So I like this fight a lot. So let's get let's talk about a couple of fights I don't like. Um, Trinaldo, Danny Roberts. That one is about a pick em. Terrible inside the distance prop. Terrible pace. Just no, no grappling upside. That's, that's kind of not for me. Um, another one I'm not going to get involved with. This is Dumont against Chase on. If anything, I probably like the underdog here, but I don't even think she's going to score well enough to win it. To, you know, to be in the optimal as a dog, even if she does win. So I think that's a fade fight. Um, so that now, so now we're, we're at these, we're at these favorites, you know, we already identified some good underdogs. Now we have to talk about some of these, some of these fights. So, so first, I mean, you have Chandler against Ferguson and you have Chandler coming in at four to one with an, in, with an inside the distance prop of, you know, it, it's, it's minus 200. But then if you look at this, it's just Chandler win by TKO is a pick -em. You know what I mean? So it's, they have, Vegas has this price as pick -em that he basically scores a hundred points. Now he's 9,600. So you're paying for that, but I mean, that's not the worst. The Tony Ferguson play is very tempting at 6,600. Um, I, 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 I worry, though, that that people who pick him is just going to be based on name value and, and not based on current form, um, which, I, you know, when, when you have aging fighters, I think it's a bad idea. So I don't think I'm going to get there, um, but I can see why people would. Next big favorite, you have St. Prue, who... You know, this is going to be a common theme. You have a, a fight doesn't go to decision about minus two to one, and he's about a little more than minus two to one. So 
fair enough. I mean, he's got to be in your player, in your, in your favorite pool. Um, we'll get back to chaos in a second. Um, Fialo Van Camp, very similar, you know, very similar to, to Chandler, right? Four to one favorite about a pick them to win with one and a half rounds. I don't see any difference between Fialo and Chandler. And as a matter of fact, they're own very similar. So, you know, take your pick between those two, whichever one you like. Um, uh, Roy Val against Matt Schnell is another one that looks like the St. Prue fight, right? A 2.4 to 1 favorite inside the distance prop, about the same. Um, this one's a little bit worse. So maybe I prefer the St. Prue to Roy Val, but only, only by a little bit. Um, even off Ruggiero, I mean, just not quite as good of an inside the distance prop as these others. Price is a little bit better. So you might be able to get one of these two guys in, but, you know, only, only in, you know, their 50th lineup and, and, and back, I think. Um, let's look at another big favorite, the Rodriguez, another one, like three and a half to one with the inside the distance prop here. Let's look at this one. All right, this one's actually pretty poor. Um, this one is probably a fade. You know, you compare this one to the, the other four to ones with really strong inside the distance props. I think Rodriguez is probably going to be a fade here. So that, that's at least something that we can do. Um, and we don't like Vergara. Journey Newsom, I've seen getting a little bit of love as a live underdog, but the numbers just don't seem to support that with respect to upside. Um, you have a fight doesn't go to the decision line of about pick them. It's not going to be good enough for me. I mean, really, um, unless, unless he, somebody has really good grappling upside, I'm just, you know, there's just too many other options on this slate to, to play a fight, which is basically pick them to even finish at all. Um, much less have our guy get finished. So, um, I'm passing on that one. I believe the one fight, which I kind of glossed over. I just mentioned really quickly that I'm going to get back to, which I think is, I mean, something you just, I really think you have to play this is, is chaos Williams. So chaos Williams against Randy Brown. is about a pick em fight. As a matter of fact, you have chaos Williams is now minus minus one twenty. Um, it's priced probably, probably accurately there, but he's got all the KO upside, you know, he, the inside the distance line is, is, is strong, you know, minus 175. And not only that, but it's, it's all chaos Williams pretty much, you know, he is think about this. I mean, he's barely the favorite. Um, chaos Williams is barely the favorite, but he is about twice as more likely to which we call it twice as more likely to get the finish as Randy Brown plus 175. So, you know, this is, this is, I think a very, very strong play. It's in the mid range. Um, it's, it's, he's got a good upside and you don't have to pay that much for it. So I think that he's an extremely strong play. Um, so what I, what I'm going to recommend here, and this is, you know, this is a, uh, Probably not going to be particularly earth shattering, but it's a little dangerous for me to think about it. I'm probably going to play both underdogs in the main um, just because they open up so much and they're just such, such strong underdog plays. That if you get them both home, you're, you're, you're a fuck, you're a freaking genius. You know, I shouldn't say you're a genius. He just opens up like so much else. And the other, the other really live underdog that I would play is this, is this Carnalosi. I really like this a lot. Um, so, you know, maybe you don't have to play all of those, you know, both those underdogs in every lineup for the main event. Maybe you could, you could say that Carnalosi, you know, you take your shot at Carnalosi and those two other underdogs from the main events and just hope the two out of the three win and you shuffle around that way. Um, I think that's a pretty, pretty cool way to play actually. And then you know, kind of sneaky other fi other fighters. 
in the mid range to review is Cass Williams and Tracy Cortez from that women's fight. Um, and take your pick of the, all those favorites. You know, if you can get Chandler in, great, but it's going to be somewhere between Chandler, St. Prue, um, Fialo, and then kind of a little bit of a drop to, to Roy Val and, um, and Rodriguez. So that's uh, my overview of the slate. Hope all these fights uh, stick around. And I will be posting some projections up there. Uh, again, the one projection I think happens to just be off is Keiichi. I think he's, I think he's just, a, he thinks he's an animal. I think he's going to rack up a, just a shit ton of, of fantasy points. And, and uh, I, I really think he's going to win, but what do I know? I mean, he is a two to one favorite, I guess, for a reason. Um, I'm just, I guess a kind of a buy, I'm kind of biased because with that one bet I actually went to was him against Chandler and Gagey just kept on freaking coming and, and, you know, look, Oliveira's, Oliveira's is the champ and all that stuff. And he's won like 100 in a row. And he certainly is much better at grappling and stuff. But this 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 guy is a freaking truck. <laughs> this Gagey. I mean, good good luck getting him down. That's that's my uh, that's my opinion. Anyway, um, good luck, everybody. And um, hope you have a good weekend.